Hey guys, Daz and R here. How you doing today? Hope you're doing well. Broadcasting from the porch today. My non-existent garden. <laughs> My three or four plants. <clears throat> I sometimes have dreams. If I'm not smoking cannabis, I, ha I have pretty wild dreams. Um, you might too. Some people report that especially if you've been consuming cannabis for a while and stop. Uh, but some of my dreams are pretty freaking crazy. So I just kind of wanted to talk about one of them uh, that I've been thinking about recently and share it with you guys. And maybe you guys can share your own dreams in the comments or can maybe interpret this dream. I'm not sure. But uh, while I remember it, let me ask you for your like, comment, and subscription, and all that other fun stuff down below. Do that early for once and see if anyone actually does like the video that watches it. I appreciate you guys for watching. Uh, but let's kind of get started with this dream analysis. So this dream happened sometime in 2023. Um, I think it was around maybe... September or August of 2023. Uh, I remember very specifically this dream. <laughs> I don't exactly remember how it really started. I just remember when the meat of the dream was actually there. And so let's just kind of get started with that. So I was having this dream and the parts that I remember, from what I remember, the very beginning that I can remember, I was corralled into this big huge round room um, with like white walls and there were lots of other people being corralled into this room as well and we were all just really freaking confused and the people that were corralling had this like military very angry very like time is of the essence we must do this now kind of like feeling to them and they had all of us people lined on the outsides of the wall and just looking around and seeing like lots of people i can't remember how many but i just recall the feeling of there being lots of people there and uh not knowing what the heck we're there for and then uh all of a sudden uh I start seeing at the opposite side of the room. Throat's getting thrit. Throat's getting slit. There we go. So people were just getting their throats cut, like nonstop, one after another, one after another. And I realized that it was making its way towards me. And I'm starting to have, like, obviously this panic, like, what the f What's going on? I'm just seeing, like, people drop. And occasionally, uh, some people weren't dropping, but most people were just <laughs> dropping like flies. And as the people that were going around and slitting the throats got nearer and nearer to me, I started to hear what they were, uh, they were asking people questions. Um, and it was just one question you get asked. And at first I had no idea what question they're asking. Uh, but as they got closer and closer to me, I could hear it. It's like, what color? <laughs> like, what color are you? And uh, I guess I, I quickly realized that anyone who wasn't saying red was getting their throat slit. Um, and by the time they got to me, I just was in a panic and said, red, 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 red. And they went on to the next person. I didn't get my throat slit. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just trying to stay alive, right? Uh, after they'd gone through the entire room, myself included, and I was scared shitless, uh, they proceeded to walk the survivors out of the room into this doorway. And once we got out in this doorway, it was like we were in this huge kind of like compound. And I don't want to say necessarily like a prison, like, field 
in a way, but I guess you could say that, you know, it was like a courtyard, a prison courtyard is kind of what it, it felt like. And I was just so confused and so scared and I had no, no idea what had just happened. And so my first instincts were to like get away from people and to try and call my friends. So I did that. I, I got on my, I, I got away from people and got my phone out. Um, I don't know how I have a phone, but whatever. I had a phone and I got it out and I tried to like send text messages to my friends and tell them what had happened. And as soon as I send like a text message, the phone gives me some error. It's like, you can't, you can't send that message. And um, as soon as that happened, like some foreman came up to me, some official person like came up to me and was like, did you just try and text someone? Did you just, and I was like, no, 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 not at all. Like I was really confused. And I, I, I realized that there, there was no one to text. There was, there's no communication with the people that were left behind. Um, I, I might as well have been texting the people that were blue and that had been murdered. Uh, I had no clue what was going on. Um, but at that point, I could tell that the person who came up to me was some sort of like lieutenant. There was like military like style insignia on whatever they were wearing and it, it's hard to recall what they were wearing but it looked very military uniform like and I remembered um, like explaining my way out of this and it was it wasn't it wasn't easy um, I think I had someone else come up and like vouch for me so that like they weren't mad that I, I tried to like message someone there I guess they were like he's, he's not gonna do it again kind of thing and I'm just like I have no idea what's happened like um so i i try to like talk to other people uh, i have no idea the the time frame that's going on while in this courtyard or this prison but i try and talk to other people and like af afraid like what's going on and i quickly found out that people are either um too afraid to speak or say anything like you could see it in their eyes you could see it in their voice they wouldn't say anything they wouldn't talk about anything or they were completely propagandized and brainwashed and completely part of this like this team this red team you know um this militarized like team and they were trying to find out if i wasn't because i think that they are still trying to weed out people um yeah, it was really scary, and it was really heartbreaking to see that, like, everyone, no one was able to speak up. And if they were, they were only speaking up for the team we are currently on. It, it was so scary, and I felt so alone, and I had no idea what to do. I, I was trapped. <laughs> it's like you, you're teleported to this new land, and you can't you can't call back home and be like, hey, this is what happened to me, because that's, that's all I was trying to do. Um, yeah, but uh, after I started talking to people and realized I couldn't talk to people, I couldn't trust people, um, it was just like this period where I didn't know what was going on. But eventually, in the dream, uh, this compound gets like not raided but like the fence gets like broken into in a way and it's like these aliens came for me and um they like took me on their ship without any of the the like red team uh understanding what happened right i was like transported to this ship and i could feel that these were people that were killed and their 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 spirit or their consciousness or whatever like left that body and went into this new form to try and come back and help <laughs> help people like me that were just totally fucking confused and just trying to survive and um they gave me some sort of like surgery and what they did is they gave me a special tooth. Like, they 
removed one of my molars and put it back and they told me yeah, now I have a Bluetooth and I was like what? and they're like yeah you got special powers now and um, they were just like be careful because they're looking for these and I was just confused and I didn't know what this tooth thing did, you know? Like, I guess I was at this point a spy. Um, and they sent me back. They sent me back to the compound. They fixed the gate so that, like, no one knew I was taken. And, um, yeah, I was back at the, the compound. And the next day, um, having just a bit more knowledge, essentially, like, there's another force out here that's trying to, like undo what had happened um i realized that these red like lieutenants or whatnot or who have these high-ranking military people they were they were looking they were so paranoid because they are looking for people that have the bluetooth you know so now now they're definitely definitely trying to find me and um this is where the dream kind of like starts to fade out and uh I don't have any more story to tell, you know. I was put back in the, the prison camp and given this Bluetooth and not explained how to use the Bluetooth or what it does or what it means to um, this red team that I was trapped on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and here we are. In America, with this amazing red-blue division, you know, it, it felt like some sort of uh, red wedding from a Game of Thrones type environment, you know, like, uh, it's really, really scary, very disturbing dream, and then after all that, it just ended, and I think that's like a symbolism for reality here like you're given the bluetooth and you're let go to have your life and i feel like in a way that is like reality here like i don't know i don't know that's maybe my reality it was really weird <laughs> it was really weird um more recently i had a dream it was over in an instant and um, it was this girl that I know and uh, she came in the dream at first it was some other girl but then she transformed into this this girl that I know and she said can you just pick red cause I don't want to do both <laughs> and uh, I said okay but if you're not in the next life, I'm going to be very angry. <laughs> and as soon as I finish saying that, my roommate knocks on my door and wakes me up. Because he needs a ride to work. But, uh... Yeah, a lot of red-blue kind of, like, dynamics going on here. Not exactly sure why. Um, that's why I don't like our American politics. I feel like... What are you doing, Cub? I feel like we're being played. Like, no matter what side you're trying to go for, I feel like you buy into some sort of propaganda, some sort of, like... storyline that isn't necessarily your truth, you know? It's someone else's narrative, no matter what. And I just really hate this American politics we have here. I don't know if it's the same in other countries. I feel like it's similar. But here... It, it's just so terrible. It doesn't represent, like, reality, I don't think. Or not the reality most of us want to aim for. This diverse set of ideas that become reality, not these one specified narratives. This narrative is reality. No, this narrative is reality. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is... Disgusting. <laughs>
It really is disgusting. I hate American politics. I really do. It just... The friends that I have that are invested in either red side or blue side, it's just when I listen to them talk, it's like, so you actually believe all the things the politicians are telling you? <laughs> That's why you're fucking crazy. Like, you actually listen to these people and you believe it. Or they're just part of the dream. They're not, they don't believe it. They're trying to get you to believe it. You know? Uh, that's what I'm weary about. Almost don't even want to vote anymore. Like, I did vote, but I have regrets. Like, I thought about the vote. And I'm like, this whole peer pressure into this two-party fake nonsense and like feeling scared or feeling empowered ah I've got to put this person it's like so gross like so far away from the spiritual aspects that a lot of people say they believe in so confusing yeah anyways that's the dream I had. <laughs> what do you guys think it means? <laughs> I thought it was so crazy when I had it. Like, I woke up that day. I told, like, everyone at work. I was like, yo, this is the dream I just had. And they're like, that's how you dream? And I'm like, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Good gosh. If it's not that, I have a lot of zombie dreams. Um, one specifically... I had early on in life and I don't fear my zombie dreams uh, they were chasing me and they caught up to me and they bit me and they didn't do anything and they were like ah and they just walked away like really upset and I was just like ow perfectly okay and I just ran off and did my thing I was like alright I guess I'm immune I have some pretty crazy dreams. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that one with you. It was pretty wild. Um, hope you guys are having a nice day. Me and Cub are about to go hiking. So you guys take care. Have a nice day. And like I said, please like, comment, subscribe, all that cool fun stuff. And join me in the next video where I talk about who knows what. Peace.